Hey, nostalgic recap here. It's a combination of six dark comedies with a vengeance called Wild Tales. The first film is called Everyone Who Dislikes Me Is Dead. Salgado was on a flight with free tickets when he was chatting with the people around him and realized that they all knew the same person called Jack. They turned out to be Jack's classmates, friends, and even Jack's former manager at work. His high school teacher thought Jack was mentally handicapped and advised him to repeat the school year. Jack's ex-girlfriend said I had cheated on him. They all got a free ticket to board the flight. Then the flight attendant said the captain closed the cockpit door. The stewardess had refused Jack's invitation when they trained together. Everyone seemed to suddenly understand what. Suddenly the plane shook violently and rushed to the ground. The plane hit and killed two old people the parents of the main character in this story. Let's look at the second story, which is called Why the Cook Killed the Guest. On a rainy night, the waitress of the restaurant was serving a guest, who had just entered and found out that the guest was her enemy. Peter was a corrupt politician, who directly led to the end of her father's life. Peter also harassed her mother after the funeral. So the cook hears about her and encourages the waitress to poison his food. But the maid was afraid to do so. The cook kept persuading and said she could take the blame for her, which is considered her benefit to society. Finally, the waitress put the poison fries on the table. Peter's son came. The waitress wanted to take the poison fries away. Peter felt that she was delaying his meal, so he began to beat the waitress. At that moment, the cook rushed out and stabbed Peter to death with a knife. The third story is called Shakim. Scorched corpses can hug each other. On the wilderness road, an Audi was deliberately cut off by a broken car. Audi was furious and drove up and insulted the other party and overtook the car and drove away. Suddenly Audi got a flat tire. Audi was waiting for the car to be repaired when the driver of the broken car Mike caught up with him. Mike's car may be small and broken, but he is not a good person. He got out of the car and pulled out the Audis windshield wipers. Then he smashed the Audi's front window with a heavy object. In anger, Audi stepped on the gas and pushed Mike and his broken car into the river. Audi was angry and drove away and then came back and tried to kill Mike. But Audi accidentally drove into the river. Audi's car door opened. Mike entered the car, also tried to kill Audi. Finally, Mike intended to ignite the gas pedal when Audi caught. The two of them were buried together in the fire. After the police put out the fire, they only saw two charred bodies holding each other. The fourth story is the appearance of a bomb in the parking lot. Is this a extinction of human nature or the decline of morality? A demolition engineer named Simon's car was towed and fined. He felt that the mistake was caused by unclear road signs and not his fault. So he went to the towing company to argue. It was his child's birthday and he was late. His wife was very angry with him. When Simon went to complain to the towing company, he was ignored by the staff. In a feat of rage, he smashed up the office, so he was detained. But bad things happen one after another. A company fired him. His wife wants to divorce him. Simon's job search was blocked. His parked car is towed away for a second time. Unannounced, Simon was so angry that he planted a bomb in the car and deliberately parked his car illegally to get it towed. When Simon's car was towed into the parking lot for the third time, the bomb exploded, so Simon went to jail. But instead of being disgusted by this horrific act, the crowd cheered and his family returned to him. Everyone celebrates his life in prison. The fifth story is the real decline of morality. Ariel, a rich kid, hits a pregnant woman and runs away. Ariel's family is going to let the family servant take his place and confess to the crime and pay the servant half a million dollars. The police investigated and concluded that the servant was not the murderer. The lawyer negotiates and tells the rich man that the police need a million dollars to be bribed. The servant also took advantage of this to ask for a beach house. Everyone is threatening the rich man for money. The rich man can't take it anymore and says he will only pay one million dollars and let them distribute it among themselves. When they finished arranging for the servant to be sent out of the villa, the victim's family came straight out of the crowd. They slammed a hammer down on the top of the criminal's head. The sixth story starts out seemingly well. On a happy wedding day, the bride discovers that the groom's invited colleague is actually a woman with whom he is having an affair. She feels sad and desperate. In her anger, she runs away from the scene to the rooftop. A chef came to the rooftop and saw her and comforted her there. The groom found the roof and was horrified to see her making out with a chef. She tasted the pleasure of revenge and threatened to torment the groom with how she would take revenge after the wedding. Then she ran back to the wedding and started cheering and dancing. The bride danced like she didn't care that her husband was cheating on her, but the groom wanted to sue for divorce. Finally, when it came time to cut the cake, they had a fight and finally made up. Their story ends in a bubble of seemingly happy marriage. Dark humor grows wildly in the wilderness. Well, 
That's the end of this video. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.